Hello and welcome to this video looking at Serif's Affinity Photo. Now today's date is the 10th of November 2022 and yesterday Serif released version 2 of Affinity Photo Designer and Publisher. Now this should pretty much be similar to all of those products um, because they're all basically built on the same program but just adapted for different purposes. Um, now I've only got the PC version and I'm, but I guess the Mac version will be exactly the same pretty much and there's also the iPad version. Now the thing about the new version of Affinity Photo is that unlike some programs when they update it like they may overwrite the old version Affinity Photo 2 is like a whole new program because Affinity Photo 1 is still available to be used. So if you don't want to update, you don't have to. You can keep Affinity Photo 1 and just keep using it until you get tired of it or you want to update at some later date. Or you can just keep both versions on. So that is one slight difference from some programs when they update. Now I don't really want to go into looking at all the major changes because there's already a couple of videos out there looking at that. One by Affinity Revolution and one by Olivio Sakaris. Um, I will add links to both of those videos in the description to this video and they are looking at the really major changes. I just want to look at the minor changes. Now the first one I want to look at is the no, starting a new document. If you, this is version 1 of Affinity Photo. So you click on the file menu and you get this options to look at you know, all the different paper sizes or print sizes or whatever. In version 2 you come to the new and you can see this has changed and you can sort of go down a, a menu to look at all the different sizes and if you pick a different size the view of that will change here showing like a better view of what that would look like when you make it and there are other you can like change from portrait the landscape from up here quite easily and you can sort of sort of work out the margins if you want them and the color format that you want to work with is found in these three tabs here another good thing is that you can if you've got favorites you can sort of click on the little heart and make those favorites and you can make your own like I did here you know by somewhere down here I think it is you can make your own preset so from down the bottom here you can create presets make new categories and all different things like that and then you have these templates and samples and things like that so that's how that bit has changed now the icons down the left here for the tools have changed um, in version 1 I personally prefer how they looked in version 1 there are sort of much clearer icons for me personally I know in the other two videos I mentioned that they seemed to quite like the new versions um, maybe I'm just old school but th these ones look a bit I don't know I mean for a start when you do have a picture open they will be, become more colourful but the colours are fairly similar and the actual icons to my mind do not really stand out as much but that's just a personal preference of mine. The other thing is although it's not highlighted yet because I don't have an image open is that the colour selector which only used to be let me go down to 
version 1. It only used to be up here and it would only appear in the toolbar down the left if you changed it from a one width icon toolbar to a two or more width icon toolbar but now they have put it in the one icon width toolbar which is a very good and handy thing because if you're not on the color tab um, up here you can still get to your colors from down there so I, I do quite like that change now another thing is changing sort of preferences now if we go back to affinity photo one now to get to preferences before you had to sort of go to the edit menu go to preferences or you could use the keyboard shortcut of control and comma and i think it's command and comma on the mac and over here you had the assistance manager and if you clicked on that you got was it about seven eight options here so but what they've done in version 2 is if you've got this icon here you can click on this and you will get the assistance options here which are the same but you do also then also have all the preferences that you can get you can still get them via the edit menu but it's much quicker to go up here to this icon and get to the preferences this way um, now because there's like a new program things haven't been sort of turned on sort of from the word go so I would advise like I have done here is put a tick in import PSD smart objects where possible um, if I remember rightly this other import PSD text was already turned on but the smart objects one wasn't um, and another thing I did, um, I changed the user interface to light because I prefer the light user interface. And the other thing I had to turn on again, I was use the mouse wheel to zoom. There may be others I will need to sort out, um, like the Photoshop plugins, for example. Um, it didn't transfer all the settings for the plugin so I had to redo that so I've only done so far I've only done the NITS collection because I use that other one the most but I will have to install some of the others at a later date um, oh, miscellaneous. so I haven't sort of checked out every little detail but basically if you want preferences and settings it's best to sort of just go straight up here to this icon up here now talking of settings um, the macros as far as I can tell have all transferred in um, because when it was installing or when I started the new version of Affinity Photo 2 after the install it asked if I wanted to transfer settings and I said yes some settings like macros seem to have come over but things like shortcuts didn't now I haven't tested this out yet because I wanted to not have to sort of do it and then uninstall it and then go back to it um, is I want to see if I can transfer the shortcuts or, you know the keyboard shortcuts from my version 1 over to version 2 so if I go to the edit menu preferences and keyboard shortcuts there is an option up here to load and save so I have already saved out to my computer these settings and I'm hoping they will come over to version 2 so we come up to here keyboard shortcuts and load now the one I'm going to test is changing the color to 50% gray because I've got mine set up I think it's alt and 5 um, which let's open a picture will be a lot easier so let's click this and drag that on oh that is another thing that has changed which I was going to mention later but I'll do it now 
from the stock menu in Affinity Photo 2 you can click and drag an image on and it will automatically open whereas in version 1 if I tried that it wouldn't work I would have to have opened a new file clicked that image onto the file and clipped it to that particular file where in Affinity Photo 2 it will do that automatically so as I said we've got this uh, the black or white up here and like I said I had it set up to do alt and 5 which, I'll, which it won't do because there's no such shortcut already set up so let's go back to the shortcuts here and then load and I saved it in documents affinity shortcuts Right, hopefully, I don't know, I have to wait a bit of time, but I'll take a chance that it's done. And do Alt and 5. There you go. It has transferred my shortcuts from Affinity Photo 1 into Affinity Photo 2. Uh, the other thing I had set up was, uh, where is it? Um, is it a layer menu? Is it document? Oh, yeah clip to canvas I had mine set up to be alt and C and it has transferred that over as well so the keyboard shortcuts you can sort of save them from your affinity photo 1 onto your computer and then load them into affinity photo 2 without having to reset everything by hand so that is looking at that and I've done the drag in the picture on to the screen now the other thing is in affinity photo one if you wanted to sort of add new uh, tabs and what have you you would have come to the view menu down to studio and then select the studio that you wanted now one of these studios effects is not in Affinity Photo 2. There may be others, uh, but this is the one obvious one that I saw because in Affinity Photo 1 you could use the studio or from the layers menu you could click on FX whereas in Affinity Photo 2 you don't come to view studio anymore you just go straight to the window menu and it lists all these studios and as you can see effects is not one of them um one is quick fx i don't know what that is oh that is they've changed the name of it there you go that's something i didn't see before it's called quick fx so you can do it that way or again come to the layers menu and come to layer effects and it will open up the floating menu rather than the effects thing so they've changed the name of it that's what threw me off and I didn't notice that there was one called quick effects so if you do want the effects over here look for quick effects and like I said there are I have a feeling is like state so I'm not certain whether that was in version 1 view studio no, there's not one there called states I mean it does seem to be quite a few there as opposed to what is now in affinity photo 2 so they may have merged a few together or done away with them altogether. I'm not 100% certain. I've only had this program for a day or so, no, a day, and I haven't checked everything out yet. There's so much to look at, and I haven't even got around to looking at design or publish it at all. But like I said, they, they probably all sort of, when it comes to minor changes anyway, pretty much the same. The icons will have been altered, 
some of the menu options may have changed and some of the studio options would have changed but it's worth looking at the sort of minor changes as well as the major changes but I would advise you looking at those other couple of videos I mentioned to look at some of the really major changes so thank you for watching this video and goodbye